In this lesson 14, we're going to take a closer look at rotations. So for this um, warm up 14.1, which is on page 97, just take a look at each figure. Decide what pair of angles looks to be congruent. And what are some strategies you could use to figure it out? So in each of these four images. So looking at figure one, for example, you likely will see that um, angle ABC looks like it's congruent to triangle GHL. Some methods you could use for that is if you had tracing paper, you could trace this angle and then move your tracing paper and see if you can fit this triangle or this angle right on this one. So just twisting your um, tracing paper to see if they're exactly the same. Could also use a protractor to actually measure um, how big that angle is. Okay, so to measure how big it actually is and compare both of them. So that's a couple of strategies. Um, so in this video, we're actually going to skip down to um, lesson 14.3. And lesson 14.3 is on page 99 in your student workbook. So you can just work your way through um, number one, pause the video, then come back and I'll talk you through it. Okay, and then do the same for number two. So on page 99, it says draw a segment, label endpoints A and B. So just draw two points, connect them with a line segment, doesn't matter how big or small or where they are. Now it wants you to rotate segment AB clockwise. Okay, so we see a couple of words here. So clockwise around center B. 90 degrees. Okay, so we're going to be rotating. So if we had this, if you could be doing this on your paper, it would be something like this. So you're taking this segment and you're rotating it. Okay, so you're taking it and you're rotating this segment up 90 degrees. So the way that you do that without having this is you would take your protractor, set it on the center. Okay, and measure where 90 degrees is. So we want to figure out where 90 is. So this is 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Put a little dot up there. So then we're going to draw out that 90 degree line. Okay, so from B through that, here's 90 degrees. Okay, so here's 90 degrees. So now we actually need to rotate this segment up there. Okay, so we actually need to rotate this segment up to that line. So you can use your protractor to preserve that length. And that will tell you where A prime goes. Okay, so rotate that segment up. to 90 degrees. So then we've got that BA prime is the rotated segment. Then it says connect A to A prime and lightly shade the resulting triangle. Okay, so connect A to A prime and then lightly shade in. Okay, so you can just take a colored pencil or your, or your pencil and just lightly shade that in. What um, kind of triangle is this? So we saw that we rotated this segment AB up, preserving its length. So we know this side is congruent to this side. You were also given that this is a 90 degree angle. So you could figure out that this is going to be an isosceles right triangle. Isosceles because it has two equal sides and then a right triangle because it has that right angle. And you certainly could check and see if the other side is the same if you weren't sure. So you've got your compass open so you could go over here, set it on A prime, rotate it down and see that it's not the same size as that side. So isosceles right triangle. 
All right, then number two says to draw a segment CD. So just draw CD anywhere. And now it wants you to rotate segment CD counterclockwise with the center D 30 degrees. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. So grab your protractor, set it on the center. So we're rotating around D. And then we're going 30 degrees counterclockwise. So now we're going down, okay, counterclockwise being this way. So now count down 10, 20, 30 degrees and draw a dot. And then draw that line on. Okay, so draw your 30 degree line that connects the center through that point. So this is an angle of rotation here of 30 degrees. So now we just need to um, rotate that segment. Okay, so making sure we actually grab the segment. So grab your, pro uh, grab your compass, open it up from D, center D, open to C, rotate this to see where C prime goes. Okay, so we'll label that as C prime. Then it says now take segment um, C prime D. So take this segment here. Okay, let me put that in a color. So now take this segment and rotate that another 30 degrees counterclockwise. So grab your protractor, set it on D. So rotate it so that your zero line, okay, so that you're lined up along that angle. Now we wanna rotate it another 30 degrees. So now we're gonna go from here, this is zero, so 10, 20, 30 degrees counterclockwise. Okay, 30 degrees counterclockwise. Draw your rotation line through there. So from D through that 30 degree mark. Now we're again gonna rotate the segment. So we're gonna grab segment C prime D, rotate it to this new angle of rotation. And now it wants us to label this one C double prime. Okay, so just two tick marks up there. Now it asks us to connect C to C prime. Um, I'm sorry, C to C double prime. So C to C double prime. So C to C double prime. And then we had also rotated this segment all the way over. So here's the triangle that we're looking at. So what kind of triangle did you know? And what other properties did you notice in this figure? So some things that you might have noticed in here. Okay, so we know that we kept rotating segment CD. So C double prime D would be the same length. So these two segments are the same length. We knew that this rotation angle was 30, and so is this. So this line right here, D to C prime, that's an angle bisector. It's splitting that angle in half. Okay, not only do you notice maybe that it's an angle bisector, but since D is the same distance away from C and C prime, D is actually on the perpendicular bisector of that segment as well. So this is actually the perpendicular bisector as well as the angle bisector. Okay, perpendicular bisector as well as the angle bisector. Um, all right, so then this would also actually be an equa 
lateral triangle and you could have grabbed this to check that out. Okay, so you can check here. So that segment's the same length, this segment's the same length. So then we can check this third side, okay, and see that that third side is the same length as well. So we actually have an equilateral triangle also. So this segment is the same length as well. So let's um, talk about some conjectures within isosceles triangles. Okay, so some things that you noticed in the isosceles triangle. So this one doesn't have an angle measure in here, but one thing that we notice is when we've got the two side lengths that are the same. Okay, because isosceles, right? So when that happens, okay, maybe you're maybe you were thinking. Okay, will this angle bisector always be the perpendicular bisector? So that could be something you thought about. Is that going to happen even if those angles right there aren't 30? Okay, angle bisector. Is it the perpendicular bisector? Let me type this out. Okay, so that might be one of your conjectures or your guesses, right? Um, all right, what are some other things you might have thought of? So some other things you might have noticed is that um, the rotation preserves the distance from the center. So that what we marked here, okay? So if we're rotating B counterclockwise, around A, that's going to land on C. So if we rotate B counterclockwise around A to get to C, then AB and AC are the same, which is what we marked on here. And if you wanted to look at it with the um, compass, so if you opened this up to B, okay, just thinking about rotating B to C. So here's B rotating to C. So however many degrees that is, but counterclockwise around A. Maybe you even um, hypothesized or conjectured that this angle would be equal to this angle. Maybe you were thinking every time that you have a 60 degree angle, you'll get um, an equiangular triangle. So if it starts isosceles and there is a 60 degree angle, that will force it to be equilateral and equiangular. So if we have a 60, like in this one, is it, it's forcing it to be equilateral. All right, so let's um, just take a look here at rotations, okay? So just thinking about this, so this is just putting some language to it. This isn't in your student workbook, okay? But this is just putting some language to how you describe a rotation right here, okay? So you would say rotate, something clockwise or counterclockwise by this angle or angle measure using a point. So you need what you're rotating, which way, the angle and the point. So if I was gonna use that for this diagram here, okay, so if I was gonna do this for this one, I would be saying so rotating so rotate point P, and then this direction is counterclockwise by A degrees. So it doesn't actually tell us the measure here, but we see that it says A degrees. 
So by A degrees using center C. That's how you would describe this rotation. So if there was an actual measure in here, you would have said, Rotate point P counterclockwise using 20 degrees, or by 20 degrees using center C. So that's just some language there, okay? When you connect the original figure to the center and the image to the center, those are radii of a circle. Okay, so if we open this out, the original point to the center, okay, is going to be on a circle rotating to the image. And the center to each point, the center to the figure, and the center to the image, those are going to be radii of that circle. All right, then let's look again at the definition of rotation. So remember, this is just the um, exact definition, okay, or the precise definition of rotation. So remember that a rotation needs a few things, okay? It needs a center. It needs a directed angle, so clockwise, counterclockwise and it needs a center point to be going around. Okay, so a rotation has a center, a directed angle, and it takes the point to another point on that circle. So if we actually drew in that circle here, it would take the, the points would be kind of on the edge of the circle using that given angle. So P prime is the, so this is just, again, the language P prime is the image of P after a counterclockwise rotation, T degrees, using the center O. And then we've got, let me make this bigger. So then this one, okay, because this one you see them drawn out. This one you don't see it drawn out. So this one has... Um, you can see A, B, C, D, and then where they map to A prime, B prime, C prime. You can also see that point D is stay staying the same. So that's your center of rotation. So I'm going to connect D to A and D to A prime. That's going to reveal your angle of rotation. So that's where you're rotating. So in this case, it's a 120 degree angle. So for this one, it would be um, figure A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime is the image of A, B, C, D being rotated counterclockwise by 120 degrees with D as the center. Okay, and you can see that language here. They said quadrilateral. Okay, 120 degrees using D as the center. All right, then this is on page 100 in your textbook. It's just the summary. So when you want to go back and see what's um, what this lesson was about, okay, page 100 has a detailed summary of it. You need a center, an angle, and a direction to do a rotation or talk about a rotation. Okay, we talked about this numerous times. Okay. All right, so then your learning targets was that you were that you can describe the rotation starting at the center and angle of rotation and that you can draw rotations.